What is delaying the release of the Marikana report? Is the delay not violating the constitutional rights of the victims' families? Are the recommendations of the report likely to be fully implemented? And does the public still have confidence in that report? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Tseidu. The Marikana Commission of Inquiry was appointed on 23rd August 2012 by President Jacob Zuma in terms of Section 84 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa of 1996. Its mandate was to investigate the events that led to the August 2012 Marikana Lonmin Mine tragedy where 34 striking miners were killed and more than 70 injured. Commission Chairperson and retired Judge Ian Fallam made an undertaking in November 2014 to release the report by 31st March this year. Judge Fallam stuck to his commitment and the report was handed to the presidency on March 31st. In a twist of events, lawyers of the injured mine workers want the Pretoria High Court to urgently release the report, while President's Counsel Advocate Hilton Epstein, Senior Counsel, says the report will only be released on 30 June. This is to give President Zuma time to study the report and be ready to answer questions. We did invite Advocate Epstein, but he declined to participate since the matter is still, as they say, sub -judicate. A reminder that this is a live program and therefore you can call us and air your views on the following numbers, 089-110-4210, the number on the screen there, 089-110-4210 or 0027-89-110-4210 if you're outside the borders of uh, South Africa. The Twitter handle to send your comments is at question time 24. My guest today, Bongo Sigazamini from the IFP, Inkara Forum Party, and he's a member of the Houghton Provincial Legislature, and Andrew Nkome from Nkome and Associate, who are representing the workers. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Um, you were not very happy that the report is to be made public by the end of the month. Um, it is almost half uh, way into the 30th. Are you just playing, you know, legal here? Thanks, Tedu, and thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. What we have before the court, it's papers that are saying the presidency will be ready to release the report by the 30th. Mm -hmm. And we do not have any undertaking that the report will be released by the 30th. So it's for that reason that we had to push through with an argument that we want the report to be released and want it to be released immediately. But if the president is saying he will release it uh, on the 30th or by the 30th, and you decide to go to court um, on the... What on the 8th, on the eighth and then the judge says, let me apply my mind. Uh, what would be the difference if he were to say next week um, the 18th and not the 30th? I guess we need to remember the circumstances that played themselves out before we went through to court. Um, the weekend prior to the president making the report, uh, 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 making mention that he'll release the report at the end of June, mm. uh, the workers that we represent together with AMCO, had requested the president to give an undertaking that uh, for the eight hours after uh, the, 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 the Sunday, mm. he will release the report. And he never did that. Um, what we had later on was that um, we had consultations, extensive consultations, and where the workers expressed their view that, one, they do not trust the president to just give a public undertaking where it is themselves that directly you know, communicated with him to say, we are the directly affected, uh, we are the injured and arrested, together with AMCO. Yes. And it's uh, in our interest that we should know as to when are we going to have the report released. Okay. So th the long and short of the message that echoed was that, one, we do not trust the presidency. And it's, it's for that reason that we want the report released. Okay. So do you believe that it will be released? 
as at now, we do not have any undertaking, mm -hmm. neither in the arguments that play themselves out at court or in the papers that the presidency released uh, or filed to oppose our client's application. Okay. So unless the court gives an order that the president must release the report, we do not have any undertaking to that effect. Okay. The IFP, Srubula says, says the president must practice Ubuntu. Um, not delay uh, this, uh, I mean, the release of this report. Are you not just being, playing politics here? No, we're not playing politics. I mean, it has been long. You know, you, the, the commission was appointed in 2012. And as I feel that is why we are not even worried about the issue of the courts and so forth, because there was a commitment when the president replied in, yes. in, in parliament that he will release the report by the 30th of this month. Therefore, that commitment makes us comfortable as the IFP. Uh, but all we are saying is that he should really take into consideration the people's plight and, 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 and not delay it in, in terms of our tactics only. Mm. Because we know he's got capacity in the, in, the, in the presidency to deal with the matter, to deal with the recommendations that are there. Because what also worries us as the IFP is not just the date, because it is there, mm. but it's whether the recommendations in the in the in the in the um, commission will be will be will be followed to the latter and not play politics as we've seen in some other uh, reports that have come before the president. But do you say it as if you know what those recommendations are? I mean, you, you know that the commission was supposed to sit for a very few, I mean, a few months, but it yes. has sat for, for a long time. Yes. Therefore, therefore, it tells you that we're not only looking at the the dealing with the victims and the families of the victims, but also looking at the entire industry of mining and the all, 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 all that structural, economic structural of our, of our mining industry. Therefore, those recommendations must not just go as far as uh, the victims mm -hmm. of, of the Barakana uh, massacre and their families only. It would appear that y you, and by you I mean the IFP and other political uh, interested parties, are only concerned about the workers who were shot by the police and not the other people who were killed uh, prior to that. There are policemen who were killed as well. No, I, mean, I mean, as I said to you, that there are victims there. Eh? Mm. Because you remember that the killing did not only start on the day of the massacre. Yes. It started a few days before. Therefore, yes. the Falam Commission has called almost everybody. That is why we are saying as the IFP, the recommendations we think will be followed to the latter because we think it will deal with the entire situation, not only the mm. section of the of, of, of the workers. We've never said as the IFP which were just concerned only about mm. we're concerned with any life that is lost, I mean was that was lost during that strike uh, mm. in, 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 in Maragana. Maybe I should uh, also uh, take that same question to you or you only acting on the basis of those who who briefed you. Indeed so yes. Um, we represent the injured and arrested mm. and we represent as well the Association of Construction and Mine Workers, AMCO. Yes. So it is those uh, recommendations that relate to the parties that we represent that would be interested in. Mm. But at the same time I guess we need to understand that the findings of the commission must go to the extent of liability. Mm. What sparked the massacre? How do we prevent the massacre happening in future? And who then should be liable for all the uh, compensations that might have to be paid? Mm. Um, for example, unlawful arrests, detentions, and assaults that people you know, had at the, at the hands of, of, of the police on the, on the fateful day. Mm. Now, you saying that the constitutional rights of your clients are being violated, how? One. We ought to understand that each day that goes past is a day that goes without our clients knowing as to what lies in the, in, the, in, in, in the report of the commission, which commission ran for close on three years in, a, in the public space. Mm. So we are saying the right, to, uh, the right to, 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 to information, the right to be able to approach the courts to make sure that you know, their rights are properly dealt with, section 34 of the constitution. Mm. So we are saying it is clear in the same way, and you know, it was argued in court that uh, uh, President Mandela back then, um, in his wisdom, he had decided to release the, 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 the TRC report at the same time as he was going through it. So the sentiment that we now express is this, that, um, that the, the current president ought to release the report whilst he considers the political ramifications that um, we understand has got, has got uh, the record are lying in the recommendations of the commission. Do you have an idea 
of how that report uh, looks like? We do not. Um, at the same time, we have not even uh, heard it from the papers. We have hoped to hear from the papers that one, it's voluminous, and two, it carries this uh, political uh, ramifications, which we had hoped to deal with at court. But uh, certainly, the, the, those papers were silent in so far as what the recommendations entail, and would not have anything except for that. Only uh, we had a a, a blank um, refusal. Mm. Yes, opposition to our parties. One to the effect that the president ought not to have his matter heard in the North Houghton High Court. Secondly, that the matter is not urgent. Okay. I want to take a quick break. When we return, we'll deal with this matter in further detail. A reminder that uh, you can call us and view, or rather, air your views. The following numbers are 89 if you are outside the borders of uh, South Africa. 00278911042104210. This is question time. Please don't go away. Welcome to Network, a technology news program that also discusses what's trending in social media in and around Africa. MTN has launched its new movie and television streaming service, Front Row. If it's trending, we will find it. That's Network with me, Spumana Lezondi, every Sunday at 7.30pm, only on the SABC News Channel. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. My guest today, Bongo Lamini from the IFP, is also a member of the provincial legislature here in Gauteng. Anderson Kome from Mkome and Associates represents the um, victims and AMCU in that particular uh, uh, case. We've got uh, Mulder. You're calling us from Pretoria. Hi, Mpo. It's Mulder in Pretoria. And I to you, I guess, in the studio as well. Yes. Um, for, as we discuss this sensitive issue because of the lost lives, ne? I always question myself, as I see in our country, I've never seen the unions ne, get giving us strategies to get the employer to book because the main problem is always employer-employee. Yes. We end up losing lives because of the frustration of the people on the ground. Okay. But I've never seen an employer being harassed or embarrassed or being... He walks in with the money and goes out free. I don't know if these things of the humans and all this is working because if I hire somebody and we've got a conflict and one of us ends up being dead, it means the one who em is, it means some I don't run the employer, but I've never seen them being harassed. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, Eunice, before you go. Yes. Oh, sorry, you used a different name. I'm sorry. Okay. Fine, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Fine, boss. Fine. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, that was Melda, not Eunice. Um, but let's let's look at uh, the the recommendations of this report. Um, you would want them implemented without delay or what, what is your uh, view there? Do you still think, are you going to take everything as it is, or are you still going to subject it to further uh, legal uh, processes? Look, Mr. Tzidu, um, <coughs> the clients that we represent are saying this, that insofar as it relates to them visiting the courts, a delay in releasing the report is uh, seriously violating their rights. Okay. And we are saying, whatever other recommendations that the, 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 the president would want to consider, after he has released the report to our clients at least, he can have his time and consider those. So if there are political ramifications that he needs to deal with, he can deal with, with those at his leisure time. Okay. 
Douglas, you are in the Val. Uh, how are you? I'm better. That's good, that's good. Listen, that guy that was talking now, I think they fall in, they go into assumptions. They go into an assumption. They're saying, oh, we assume that it's going to be in our favor. It sounded like he had already blamed the president mm -hmm. for what the uh, report is going to say. He's expecting that that report is going to be for uh, a, a negative for the president. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that is right. I don't think they must be going to assumption, huh? and I really think that what will happen when when this report is released, and and they find that there's no uh, that all the parties were were party to the whole uh, the whole thing. Yes. What happens then? Okay. You follow what I'm saying? Get your point, Dougie. Yeah. All right. So, so it doesn't make. Okay. Yes, I guess it's a question that I almost asked. Earlier. I guess let's deal with basics. Um, the law says justice delayed is justice denied. Yes. So at that point only, we have the rights of the, the people that we represent that were in the commission um, being violated. And I am acting on behalf, on, on instructions of clients that come through. You know, I wish the caller was at court when uh, Advocate Zabeza was informing the court as to what really transpired. The defense that we have from the police side is that they were acting in self-defense. Now, he, he even went to an extent of saying we need to have a new definition of self-defense because how does somebody that is caught 400 meters away shot, how, how can that be self-defense? So I'm saying simply because of the instructions that we have, mm -hmm. I believe the version that our clients put through, and it's for that reason that we're, we're willing to, to fight our client's case to the last end. Where, 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 where does the IFP stand here? Um, are you blaming government already as well? I mean, we can't uh, play the blame game now. That is why for us, the 30th of June is the day. Okay. And we are just worried that there is no, uh, I mean, cooking of the report. We think it will be released as is. Mm. Uh, but how can it be cooked? Uh, 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 I mean, the history, history of commissions throughout the world are, are full of those things. That is why even there's a joke I mean, uh, uh, in, in politics that if you want to sweep something under the carpet, you appoint a commission, which will uh, uh, and appoint a commission on top of the commission. Do you have but confidence? We, don't, we, we have confidence. We don't, we don't doubt anything. We think, we think that Judge Feldman has done a good job. That's why okay. he's, he's asked for ex to extend the time. And because the, the, what must come out there is that more than 40 lives were lost. Okay. Secondly, in the hands of the state and the unions. Secondly, among the communities themselves. Thirdly, there is an issue of relationships between employer and employee. Mm. There is the issue of social, uh, social, social ills around mining towns. So all those issues must come up in the mm. Falam Commission. And, I thi and, we think th and we think there will be no reason for government not to implement those because the victims have a right to know what happened to their loved ones mm. a, a, on, 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 on all sides. And okay. as a country, we need to know that how this strategy has happened and how in the future we're going to, pre to prevent it happening. And secondly, those who are responsible, yes, they must take the flank and okay. we must not be apologetic about it. Okay. Bongan, you are in the Eastern Cape. Bongan. We have lost Bongani there, but give us a call. The number to dial are the ones that will be on your screen just now, and uh, let us hear what your views are. Because indeed, a lot of people have an opinion that, uh, on this subject. Zero eight nine double one zero four two one zero or double zero two seven eight nine one one zero four two one zero. Who do you want to fall? <laughs> <laughs> I would only want the rights of the clients that we represent to be upheld. Mm. I would want them to be compensated. I would want them to go through to the court and say um, we were exonerated mm. by the commission. And look, um, the other caller had been saying that we're acting on speculation and, uh, and, and all sorts of other things. But I'm only, I'm only saying that I'm hoping for a report from the commission that comes out and tells the truth about what transpired on the day. The evidence has been led before the commission, everybody knows. Yes. And you see, I know that you're representing your clients. Um, 
but are you willing to be objective? You know, it's for that reason that we came through to the commission to, to say we're playing open cards. Yeah. We are saying what transpired there was this and this only. Yeah. You know, so definitely yes, we are willing to be objective. Okay. All right. Tell me you are in uh, the case then? Yes, I'm Paul. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Okay. Uh, I think the, the, the legal representative that is, rep that is representing the minors is, is being presumptuous, uh, uh, Paul. Mm. Uh, the mere fact that uh, he's actually alluding to the fact of questioning the self-defense option of the police, I think uh, he's, he's, he's being hypocritical. Uh, I think we must wait until the, the report is released. Mm. But my question for him is, is that uh, would the minors accept blame or responsibility should the, the report uh, uh, go, uh, go against them uh, in that regard? And then uh, secondly, with, we, we, I always have a problem uh, with the political parties who suffer from uh, political boredom and then uh, scavenging on and on dead meat. I think we want to find the relevance in, 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 in such a, a, a challenging times. Uh, the less said about the MP, the, the better. Okay, but I'll get them to respond to that. You know, I guess uh, the caller is being very crafty with wits. Um, he's talking about hip hi hypocrisy. And, you know, in my statement about uh, the defense of self-defense, mm -hmm. I even stated that I wish the previous caller had been in court where Advocate Nzebeza was informing the court that this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Somebody was shot. 400 meters or so away from the point at which there had been a confrontation. So that in itself cannot constitute uh, self-defense. Mm -hmm. So I'm only seeing being basic in so far as what really uh, uh, constitutes uh, uh, self-defense in the circumstances. And, and I'm putting only the version of the clients that I represent. Okay. Well, I guess, um, you know, political parties again are being questioned, what are you doing? I mean, I don't know what the caller wants to achieve here. One, I'm a guest here. I was, uh, we were invited mm. to, to have the views of the IFP, and the IFP has a constitutional right to exist. We are the first largest party in parliament, and therefore we, 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 we are entitled to air our views on the matters that tie South Africa. Mm. And it is not of the IFP's making that more than 50 people died in Marikana. It is not of the IFP making that mm. the workers don't trust the presidency. It is, but the IFP has a, a, a duty to, to aid its views when it's invited to aid its views. And that's why you are saying is IFP the 30th has been committed as the date let's wait and see what happens there and we hope that it will be implemented to the latter okay so come the 30th the report is released are you willing to accept it even if it does not support your assertions we do not have an undertaking that the 30th is the date on which the report will be released okay and it's upon the report being released it's it's for that reason that we are awaiting judgment uh, on monday the 15th of january at 11 mm. for the court to make an order for the court to make a decision as to whether or not it orders the president to release the report as per our request immediately mm. so whatever findings that are in the commission's report are findings that we're going to be willing to accept if they're in line with the truth about what transpired on the copy on the 16th of August in 2012. Okay. What would be your word of advice to who? <laughs> I wouldn't particularly say I would have a word of advice, except for that it has been played out in courts even, that uh, there are serious political ramifications that uh, are playing themselves out in the, in the report. And the clients that we represent are of the view that there isn't per se a political ramification, but uh, the presidency uh, is hiding and trying to make protections of people that are high up there in the ladder. Who? The people who are high up there? People that came through to appear in front of the commission. Just give I'm, me I'm, two. I'm saying, um, we, we're talking about the, the president of the country, amongst others, we're talking about provincial commissioners, national commissioners of the police. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. That was question time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show. Get in touch with us. Our email address, questiontime at sabc.co.za. From me and the crew, have yourself a wonderful time. Goodbye.